1 Samuel chapter 28 to my wife. Amen. All of God's children here today. Amen. To the survivors of cancer, give them a hand, pray. The devil you a lie. Amen. Verse 1, now it came about in those days when the Philistines gathered their armies, camps, for war, to fight against Israel. And Acha said to David, now surely that you will go out with me in the camp, you and your men. David said to Achish, very well, you, you shall know what your servant can do. So Achish said to David, very well, I will, will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel was dead. And all Israel lamented him and buried him in Ramoth, his own city. And Saul removed from the land those who were, were mediums and spiritists. So the Philistine gathered together and camped and came and camped at Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they camped at Gibeon. When Saul saw the camp of the Philistine, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dream or by urine or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servant, Seek for me a woman who is a medium. I may go to her and inquire of her. And her servant, and his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman who is a medium in indoor. Then Saul disguised himself by putting on other clothes and went. He and two men with him. They came to the woman by night and he said, Conjure up for me, please, and bring me for me whom I shall name to you. But the woman said to him, Behold, you know that Saul has what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who are mediums and spiritists from the land. Why are you then laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? Saul vowed to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Brother Herb, with the sequence of events that, that transpires in just an evening. The subject that's on the program, You Cannot Hide from God, uh, is, it won't be our text. Uh, our text is the same, but the subject is when you can't hear from God. The text is the same. That's how God works. But the subject is now when you can't hear from God. Imagine, if you will, be in a place where you can't hear from God. There's nothing uncommon for, for Israel because between the Old Testament and New Testament, that's called inter-testamental uh, period, was, there was 400 years of silence. The quiet years, the silent years from God. Imagine being a believer and cannot hear from God. Imagine walking your daily walk for 400 years and you cannot hear from God, but they, they were reminded the last thing they heard was about Jesus, so they waited 400 years to hear about God, but imagine, uh, Sister Fear, in your daily walk today that, that you don't hear from God. Uh, Pastor Mike, I'm led to believe a lot of people say they hear from God, but they're not really hear from God. Too many people say God told them to do stuff and it's ungodly. You got to be careful when you're listening to the wrong voice. But as believers, Sister Carter, it's vital that we listen to the voice of God because there are some wolves in sheep clothing. You just listen to God, you take stick around long enough, and, and, and the wolves cannot stay in sheep clothing only but for so long because they claws will soon tap the fabric and, and you'll see them for who they really are. That's why it's important as believers to, to know and have a connection with God. I don't care what you do before you do it. You better learn to talk to the Lord because some of us suffer from some stuff that we put ourselves in and then we go back to God and ask God to 
break us out. Do I have anybody here that can say, I wish I listened to the Lord? Anybody beside me have done some things, went some places, said some stuff that you just wish God had, had spoken a little louder? But it's dangerous when you cannot hear from God. You cannot really shout when you don't hear from God. And you can't really praise when you can't hear from God. Sometimes you're sick and you just want to hear that things are going to be all right. You just want to hear God is going to turn some things around. But when you cannot hear from God, yeah. Yeah. oh, you head down in despair, disgust. And sometimes you feel derogated because everybody seems like they're blessed but you. But I start by to tell you, when you cannot hear from God, go back to the last report you got from him. I wish I had somebody say, I may not hear from the day, but the last thing he said to me, that everything is going to be all right. I may not hear from the day, but the last time he spoke to me, he said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. If you don't give me any other marching orders, I'm going to just march time and stay where I'm at. Do I have anybody here that says, God, don't say nothing else. He has already said enough to let me know I shall be victorious because he told me, if I don't hear nothing else, he already told me that if I be for you, who can be against me? In other words, to trans transcribe what he said, if I'm on your side, there's no devil in the arm in hell that can take you under. So in other words, as long as you got me in your life, everything is going to be all right. Don't have about 10 folks here. Say, that's my shout station right there. I know I got God in my life. So when I can't hear from God, I still got a reason to give God praise. I just go back to the last thing I heard. Of. That's why the old folks used to say, go back to the old landmark. Because sometimes the new landmark won't do you, but it won't move you like it used to move you. So if you're not moved where you are, go back to the last place. You feel some fire. Go back to the last place. You feel some fire. Anybody remember the old house, Big Mama house? Yeah. They had the, the gas stove, gas heater. The fireplace, and then when you come in from outside, when it used to have cold winters, everybody come right to the fireplace. I wish I had some old folks here. I'm not old, I was just raised around old folks, amen. And, and they come to the fireplace, and, and they get up to the clothes they could, and then they go get burnished. So, see, when you're cold, you better learn to, to get to the fire because you know where you're. And sometimes they even set your rear on fire. That's some folk had been moved because they real had been set on fire. But when you're real, I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it NIP. I don't want to use King James in here. So when uh, God set your rear on fire every night of the year, you ought to move up in here because God been good to you. Do I have anybody that got a woo-woo in here? You woke you up, woo-woo. Started you on your woo-woo. Put food on your tank, woo -woo. I wish I had somebody should have been dead in jail, and you still got a woo woo. Give God a praise up in here. That, that's what Saul was, the king of Israel, and almost at the end of his 40 year reign. The reason Saul was king, it was not because he was set for the kingdom, but he had king qualification and king characteristics. Sometimes you can be put in a position just because you looked apart. A lot of our churches will put people in place just because of who they are. I know y'all are doing that in Atlanta, uh, uh, Dr. Madden, but because some people make certain amount of money or uh, certain status quo, we'll make them certain, put them in certain position. But position should come my way of salvation. It's good to have people in position, but to make sure that you make sure they save first. Because just look at the part when I help you when the stars come in your life. People may look good, smell good, but when trouble comes your way, do they know how to call on a savior named Jesus? Saul was a king because he had a high stature. He looked good. And the Bible said he was good. He would look goodly. And he stood above everyone else. And he was sent a king because the people desired a king. Why would you want a king when you got a God? Too many people want a king when you got a God. That's why you, you can't find your prince because 
So whatever you need, stop seeking stuff and folk and start seeking God. God will supply all of your needs. So Saul was simply a king, not because he had the know-how, but he, he, he had some attributes that looked like the king. Forty years later, Brother Mark, 40 years later, uh, uh, Sister Nicky, it, it began to wear on him. Because yeah. the only thing you do for God is relax. Yeah, right. And for 40 years uh, of this, and, 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 and the people are against him, he spent most of his kingship trying to kill the greatest person that could have helped him. Ah. When you're in ministry, when you're on your job, don't, don't, don't hate on the folks that's coming behind you. No, don't hate on that young staff or don't hate on that person behind you and instead of trying to kill them let them help you and you still get the credit <laughs> Saul spent most of his life trying to kill David when David could have been the greatest asset that he had the problem with men of us when people come to Christ they can help us because that's some stuff they can do that we don't know how to do but before they get their feet wet in the church we look at them funny too many Sundays in a row and they decide instead of going back to that church I go somewhere else don't you know we may not be able to do what they can do but they come in and get God in their life they can help them do some stuff that we can't do if you don't believe me trust in God and believe God there's some young people that don't dress like you dress don't smell like you say smell but they know how to turn your iPad and all of you don't. <laughs> then you reach these boys that you can't. And so instead of killing them and killing them out, let's bring them in and watch God use the whole body to be a blessing for the kingdom. <laughs> Saul was in a place where he didn't hear from God, and Saul began to find, try to find other resources to hear from God. Listen, when you don't hear from God, stand still. Yeah. 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 And we, we, we quit, Brother Tony, to put stuff on God. Yeah. We'll even open establishments mm. in God's name. Yeah. Heavenly nails. Yeah. <laughs> Tamika godly dudes. Yeah. You better be careful before you put everything on God. I hope anybody got him and nails up in here. <laughs> if I got it to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Saul was at a place where he could not hear from God. That verse 3 through 7, we see Samuel was at one point his direct asset to God. And because Samuel was not there, but before Samuel died, he stopped listening to Samuel. Yeah. Uh, let me think at home. You know, when Big Mama was alive and she kept telling you what to do, you didn't want to listen to her while she was awake. And now you go visit the grave every Mother's Day, say, Mama, you told me all this stuff. Listen while Big Mama's still here. <laughs> because one day Samuel is going to be dead. Samuel's dead, and now Saul is in trouble, Sister Moon, and he, he got to find somebody, and I think, I don't want to listen to nobody else, I don't want to listen to nobody else, but I got to find a way to get back to Saul. You better grab hold of those nuggets while you can. Amen. Mama won't be here always. Amen. Learn how to cook the biscuits before she dies. Daddy won't be here but always. Learn how to cut grass and change a tire before he dies. Because and guess what? Pastor Morris won't be here always. Your teacher won't be here always. You better grab hold of because one day you're going to have to stand for yourself. So Saul, in verse 3 through 7, we see the silence of God. Saul was king of Israel. And he was in deep trouble. He refused to heed to the warnings of the prophet Samuel while he was alive. And he find himself in trouble. When you're in trouble and you can't go anywhere else but the God, you better make sure you have a good close relationship with God. Because people will walk away, turn their back on you, your business will collapse, but God is still God. He was surrounded by his enemies and David was a but join the forces that we uh, were going to fight against Israel. He didn't know David wasn't going to fight, but he, he knew David was in the army. And David had a reputation of killing folks. Because Saul, even, Saul was around when they saw the song, Saul has killed his thousand. But David has killed his ten thousand. And Saul was worried about his own life. Now Samuel was dead. He could not go to him from guidance of the Lord. That's why it's important believers to make sure you have a relationship with God for yourself. Yeah. 
when Calvary took place, they built up Calvary, and Jesus died. They said the veil of the temple was written in two middles toward half. That gave everybody direct access to Jesus for yourself. I love the Catholic. I got some great Catholic friends. I got a great Catholic father. We work together. But guess what? I can't tell the father everything I've done. That's some stuff I need to go straight to Jesus. And because of that, I got direct access to Jesus for myself. And when you are believers and we promise that we believe that we can call on Jesus morning, noon, and night, you ain't got to have an eviction. You ain't got to have a meeting. You ain't got to have a vote. You can just say, Father, I stretch. My hand can be no other help than I know. And so Saul was at a place where he's deep in trouble because he could not hear from God. Yeah. And we also see that God would not speak to him. It's one thing to be in trouble, Brother DeAndre, but it's something else that God won't speak. Nigga, yeah. Brian, I've been in trouble, but in my troubling days, it's good to know God will reply. Yeah. Sister, Sister Rosa Brown, it's something totally different when you're in trouble and God don't say nothing at all. Yeah. He tried every way. And if I, if, if I could write this out, I'd say every witch. Way. Every which way he could to communicate with God, but God did not answer. He did not answer by dream or urine. That's an ephraw, like a light that would light up that the priest would have. He had to pray. He did not answer that. The prophets would not speak to him. He had no resources of hearing from God. That's a dangerous place to believe, believers. I don't know. I know it's home come on last week. Don't think the education got from Savannah State. Can ask some stuff that God can do for you. I want you to get all the education you get, but education money can't do it for you. Your friends can't do it for you. You better make sure you hear from God. He had this problem was that not only had a trouble, but he had a problem that he had to, and the problem was that he had he had done something right. He had expelled witches from the land. Saul had expelled a witch from the land. It was first instituted by Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18. But Paul, when Saul was in office, he expelled any witch from the land, and he said, if you, if you practice, you'll be, put in, you'll be killed. So when it says spiritist, a medium, that's been another word for witch. Yeah, that's right. Spiritist, one called a spirit medium, with one that tried to call on people from the dead. So it says medium, it's talking about people call on dead folks. That's all I'm here about. Don't call on them. Uh, if you want to get away some free money, <laughs> meet me at Dairy Queen. I'll tell you something. Whatever you want to hear. So he, 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 he was seeking a medium, and they, and they said, there's a medium now in indoor. They didn't give a name, but they gave a location where she was. And, and many believers have felt subject to the same practice today. We, we look at the horoscope. Raise your hand you look at the horoscope every week. <laughs> Some people that hear in the pocket. <laughs> Play the Ouija board. Go on over to see Mr. Buzz or whatever his name is. What's his name? You see, y'all know him, too. <laughs> Saul had expelled them from the land, and so he wanted to hear a word from God so bad that he said, give me a witch. They had called on somebody from the dead. And this lady, she was wise enough to know that if I do this and the king find out about it, he's going to kill me. So, so uh, uh, Mr. Smith, what happened, Saul disguised himself, took off his royal robe, and, and, and presented himself as a beggar, and when he came to the woman, the lady said, well, you know, if Saul found out about this, what's going to happen to me? And, and Saul, being disguised as someone else, said, well, uh, I swear to you this day, uh, by the Lord, that nothing would happen to you. And, and she said, who you want me to bring up for you? <laughs> and he said, Samuel. Uh, now, if you're going to see a witch, <laughs> the last person you probably want to call upon is the priest. <laughs> and, and, and what was ironic about it because everybody else that probably went to say they wanted to hear from grandmama or, or old relative or something. Nobody wanted to hear from the priest because that was ungodly. So when he asked for Samuel, 
she immediately knew he was Saul. It's something about when you got God in you. You can only get so far from God that, that you will learn how to call upon his name all over again. You can leave home and go to college, go to the military, but when trouble get mad, you learn how to call back on the name of God. That's why the, uh, Solomon said in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child. When he's old, you should know which way to go. He won't depart from it. Some of you have strayed away, but you learn how to call back on God. And she said, Nina knew it was Samuel, knew, and knew it was Saul, and Saul probably wouldn't have happened to her, but you got to understand, he was seeking ways being from God. He just, but the problem is, he did not wait. There must be a level of patience in hearing from God. Everything will happen in your time. Saul wanted a solution, verse 8 through 11, Saul wanted a solution right away. Uh, it's foolish to act without consulting God first. You cannot suffer anything from the direction of God in our life but God. Our God is a jealous God. Even Christians have tried to substitute other stuff for God. God is no substitute. He cannot be substituted and he cannot be replaced. So if you want to hear from God, seek God and until he answers, just wait until God show up. They used to say he may not come when you want him to come, but he's always right on time. So if God don't tell you to go, stand still. If he tell you to go, stop standing still and move. God, he's going to tell you yes, no, or wait. Wait on God. Saul did not wait. He wanted to answer right away. And in desperate times, we seek desperate measures. He sought to know God's will by any which way. W-I-T-C-H. He, he, he went to the witch to find an answer from God. Probably remember our church, we go to the witch to hear what God got to say. If you want to hear what God say, you better learn to go to the word of God. So, because God's word will lead you, guide you, and direct you. You better be careful how you go to somebody that don't go to church and tell you how to be church. How you ask somebody to pray for you they never been to prayer meeting? How you gonna see somebody that help you with scripture say they don't go to Bible study themselves? You better be careful. You may be going to the witch. Three things I want to give you. I know you got to finish homecoming celebration. I'm going to get out your way. When you can't hear from God, remove the barriers that's between you and God. There was a man and a wife riding down the road. And the wife said to her, after years of marriage, she said to her husband, why, why we don't sit close together like we used to? He said, I, I had moved. I'm still in the driver's seat. <laughs> And if you didn't catch that, they hit you on 516. <laughs> God hadn't went nowhere. But the problem is, we have put too much stuff. You remember, remember the time I tell my wife, uh, God bless you with a new truck, you reach back and thank you for helping me pay for it. Uh, uh, it, it but I tell my wife, my dad had a, a 76 Chevy, had one seat. My, my mama, my dad, and my sister, and me would all be in the front seat. And, and, and y'all like, why? Well, what we'll happened? My dad be at the, at the driver's seat, then one of us would sit up, other sit back, and we kind of all, we had plenty of room. But the reason, and, and my mom could sit close to him, but the, you can't do that now in the trucks because they got too much stuff in between the driver and the passenger. The reason many of us can't get close to God, uh, 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 Sister, Sister, uh, Sister Robinson, because we got too much stuff uh, between the co-passenger and the pilot. And we got good education, we got money, we got we got cars, we got houses, we got good health, we got suits, we got good wheels, we got Brazilian hair, we got high heels, we got three-piece suits, we got fishnet stockings, we got all type of stuff. We got ruins, we got makeup, we got men, we got women, we got too much stuff in between us and God. I start by to tell you, if God is still in the same place he been today, yes and evermore, but the problem is we got too much stuff between us and God. So if you can't hear from God, it's not God because he haven't went anywhere, but we got too much stuff. Look at somebody 
to tell them, you better move some of the stuff out of the way. Saul had a long history of disobedience. His penalty was God stopped speaking to him because he had too much stuff. You better learn to remove the barriers that's coming between you and God. I don't care what it looked like, you better say, you got, I, can't, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it was good while it lasted, but you're you the way between me and my God. You, you only go for a few hours, a few moments, but God is everlasting. You better learn to move some stuff out the way. I'm glad I'm, this is my church. Y'all ain't got to bring me back next year for a revival. Y'all gonna see me next Sunday. You better be careful of what you get that work God out your life. When you didn't have a job, you was here every Sunday. Every time the doors open, you was here. That you came to the church and asked the church to pray with you for a job, and now you got the job. We can't even see you. When you, when you was in the hospital, you said stuff to me and your deacon like, as soon as I get out of this hospital bed, I'm going to be in the church out of here. You even try to fool me when I get to have a Bible open up and all that type of stuff. But as soon as you get well, we've got your name on the list, but you can't come to church. You got folks on the sick list. I thank God for our sick folks we pray for. But, but what bothers me, our sister Monique, maybe you can help me. We got sick folks that can't come to church, but they on vacation taking pictures. Child, tell them I'm glad it wasn't you, but I'm going to 
trust in God. Stop this to folks that, that don't have a husband. <laughs> Help you with yours. Thank you. Because if you do got a back door at the house, Five sixteen. <laughs> Number three. Cultivate a closer relationship with God, and He will provide all your needs. Matthew six thirty three says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness in all things." should be added unto you. When you got all, you can't add nothing to it. All is just what it says, all. And if you cultivate a closer relationship with God, he will provide, not some, but all your needs. Instead, instead of Saul trying to get closer to God, he spent his energy trying to kill David. Stop trying to spend your time trying to get back at folks that done you wrong. Stop trying to set traps for folks you don't like. Stop trying to cut folks off that may be coming up on you from the rear and start getting closer to God and watch God supply all of your needs. I wish I had somebody here that said, I'm tired of trying to stop everybody from doing this and trying to make everybody like me, trying to push myself forward. If you just seek a closer relationship with God, God will propel you to another level in your life. Do I have anybody here that's ready to go to higher heights? Instead of trying to get another degree, start coming to church more. Instead of trying to spend more money on yourself, look better, come to church more. That's a fault that's half, that's half younger than you, but look worse than you because they don't have a relationship with God. God will give you good health, life, and strength, but you've got to seek a closer relationship with Him and watch God supply all of your needs. See, Big Mama they go to spell. <laughs> big Mama never walked on Savannah State campus, but Big Mama had a close relationship with God, and Big Mama made it through life ups and downs, and she still had joy. See, Big Daddy never went to Morehouse, never went to Savannah State, but Big Daddy had a piece of job, third grade education, and he took care of 12 children and never missed a meal, never got a child support check, never got food stuff, SSI, but when you got God in your life, you see you first. So the kingdom of God, you can hear from God. If I don't hear from him, but he answered my prayers by supplying all my needs, he ain't got to say a word. What are you trying to say? When I'm hungry, and I don't have to come home and say, baby, what's for dinner? But when I'm hungry, and I walk in the house, and she say, your food in the microwave, I ain't have to say a word. That's how God is. When you got a close relationship with God, before you ask him to heal your body, healing is on your way. Before you ask him to supply your needs, your need has been provided for. Do I have anybody here that say when you can't hear from God, you better put your eyes on God. Don't go to the left and don't look to the right, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all things shall be added unto you. If you need joy, he got joy. If you need peace, he got peace. If you need deliverance, he got deliverance. If you need a way maker, he's a way maker. If you got a burden, he's a burden bearer. If you got a heavy load, he's a heavy load shatter. Do I have anybody here that know he will pick you up, turn you around, and place your feet on solid ground? Tell somebody. Jesus, 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 Jesus,